Hey, Greg, thank you for taking the time to do this. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, so just kind of want to do uh, check in with you in terms of you had a big sack yesterday, just how that felt to kind of contribute there and then what you guys need to do to kind of get this thing turned around. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, first of all, it was super fun, you know, getting, getting sacks is always fun. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, just get, I think we can improve pretty much at every facet of the game, honestly, special teams, defense, offense, we need to improve on all of them. So, I mean, that's, that's all we can do, you know? Yeah. Does, does it seem like, you know, it's going to take a lot of work to get that done or is it the kind of thing that can turn, you know, with one play or a couple plays that, you know, spark some spark some kind of turnaround. I mean, I think so. I think I mean a lot of football games come down to just a couple, a couple key plays, and we just need those key plays to go in our favor. You know. So. Um, in terms of Kansas City, um, what what do you? And I know you you guys are just watching film. You really haven't turned your attention to them yet. But um, what? What do you think the challenge will be with, you know, Patrick Mahomes and that group? I mean, obviously they have a pretty talented group over there and at least Patrick Mahomes is a really good quarterback. So, I mean, we're not going to have our hands full. Um, but yeah, like you said, we haven't gotten too deep into it yet. So we're just getting started. So. Thanks very much. Yeah. Jordan. Hey Greg, thanks for doing this. Um, Sean has mentioned a lot about in the in the past several weeks and really since the start of the season, not being able to find much complimentary football. Um, he was often referring to, you know, the offensive side of the operation, but yesterday talked about how everything just felt like there wasn't really a, a lot of cohesion. Um, can you put your finger on that? Maybe why that is, or um, can you put your finger on how that gets fixed? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, as to why that is, I have no idea. I mean, it's just I try and worry about the things like that I can control. And I don't really like if it's out of my hands, it's out of my hands. I try not to worry about it too much. And you know, it's we like I said before, we can improve basically every every position group, every facet of the game. There's room for improvement. Like it's not there's not one one thing that's just tearing us down right now. You know, it's all of us need to just take a step up, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as a defensive front, uh, front seven as a whole, um, you guys are stopping the run just overall through the course of the season. You guys are stopping the run really well. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of leaves only one way for teams to to try to beat you, especially when there's a cap on some of the explosives. And you've seen quarterbacks get the ball really, really fast yeah. week, week over week. How do you guys adjust to that? I mean, the biggest thing I think – like with these quarterbacks getting rid of the ball so quick against us is just like not getting discouraged. I feel like it's really easy to like, just be like, Oh, they're going to throw it so quick. Why bother rushing? But there's going to be that one time where they're going to hold the ball just long enough and you're going to get, get through, you know? So you just got to not like get discouraged. I would say. And that's mm -hmm. really just that's keep good, rushing. That's a good point. And then um, when you're communicating front to back, um, is there are there things you guys can say or do or how you guys communicate as a front from the front to the coverage in terms of like, hey, I'm seeing this. Here's how we get this guy to hesitate with the ball in his hand just a, a little bit longer or just sort of those tweaks and tells that maybe can complement each other a little bit more. I mean, we don't really like communicate with the the bad guys on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, that's just kind of how it works. Like, obviously, if they if they're like coverage is really tight, it's going to make that quarterback take an extra hitch or something, you know? So, I mean, it does work hand in hand. Like, I think like one of the sacks I had yesterday was just because we had great coverage and it gave me enough time to get there. So. Awesome. Thanks for the insight, Greg. Yeah. Greg. Hey, Greg, you've been on a lot of good football teams in your career. You were on a lot of good Huskies teams in your college career. What's it like being in this situation that you have really never faced in your football career? I was just thinking about that today, actually. I've never, I've never been on like a losing streak like this, you know, it's, it is tough. Um, 
because I, I get every single team. I've had a, I've gotten a championship at every single level now, high school, college, and uh, in the NFL. So it is definitely a little different experience, and losing sucks. <laughs> so I'm not a big fan of losing. I'm a competitor. We all are competitors, you know, at the highest level, and none of us like to lose. So. Speaking of that, what's the overall mood like in this locker room after losing four in a row, like you said, for the first time in your NFL career or your college career? And is it is the mood different than it was at three and three when you're going the bye week and things were still in play more more accessibly than they are now? I mean, I think, you know, the locker room vibe is kind of like, you know, we're professional athletes and we're going to keep playing as hard as we can, no matter what, you know, it's like, this is our job and we get paid to play well. And I think, I don't think anyone's going to change the way that they play, you know, it's just, we just got to keep going. 